Hey, good morning boys and girls. It's Mr. Whitley and today's lesson is for Wednesday the 8th and if you're following along in our packet, you're on week 3, day 2. Uh, the article that you're reading is going to be about the Erie Canal. Uh, your math that you guys are doing will be the second page talking about kites and they ask you to measure the height of how kite, high the kite will go, but using that paper clip that we gave you in your special tool bag. And then for geodes, for our, I'm sorry, for our phonics, they're talking about using suffixes and comparing suffixes like smaller or smallest. Remember, when you're talking about things like smaller, you're comparing two things. You're saying, okay, well, two or more things. And then smallest, you're saying, that's the most that you can get. So that's the smallest thing you can get. Still can be comparing two or more things, um, but that one, smallest, means it's the most that you can get. Like softer, like this blanket is softer than that one, but this blanket is the smallest. It means, hey, that thing is the most, okay? All right, so we're gonna jump right into phonics, and we're gonna continue to build on double vowel syllables, and then we're gonna do a, a, a math. We're gonna talk a little bit more about data and using picture graphs. We're gonna talk about um, a PAS lesson Talking about something that we may not be thinking about quite as much right now since we're kind of separated from each other, but that's feeling like part of a group. And then we're going to read a book uh, called Strictly Elephants. So let me bring you in a little closer and let's check out our board. So for our double vowel team, hopefully this is straight and easy for you guys to see. Um, so for our double vowel teams up here, we're still talking about O-U, so our O-U sounds. O-U, remember, can make two sounds. O-U, trout, ow. O-U, soup, oo. So think about those two when you're coming across words. The whole reason that we're teaching you these sounds for these double vowel teams is so when you're reading a new word which has O-U, you can say, all right, I know that the O-U double vowel team can make two sounds. And also when you're trying to spell something, when you hear, you're trying to tap out trout, or out, and you hear that ow sound, you're like, oh, I know what makes that ow sound. Often that O-U makes that ow sound, okay? So here we have two examples of, um, Two, two different groups of words that have either the ow or the, the oo sound. So group and youth both make that oo sound here. And people have asked me, hey, how do I mark these things up? Well, let me get a little closer and mark them up for you, okay? So for group, we're gonna clap it out to figure out how many syllables it has. Group. It has one syllable, so we're going to give it one scoop. We know that GR is a blend, not a digraph, so we give it two lines, a line under each letter. And then we're going to circle the OU and put a D underneath it because that's a double vowel syllable. Same with youth, that OO sound that the OU team can make, we clap it. Youth, one syllable, which means we give it one scoop. We circle the O-U, we give it a D, and we underline the T-H because that is a diagraph. Now over here, for pound, ow, making that ow sound, pound, we clap it out, pound, you notice everything we've done so far is one syllable, so it gets one scoop. We circle that O-U, double vowel team, we give it a D, and we have N-D, that is a blend, not a diagraph, so each letter gets underlined on its own. And then pout, hopefully something that you don't do. Um, 
pout. We know that's probably going to be one syllable. Pout. We scoop it and circle it and put the D for that double vowel syllable. Okay, so you and I yesterday had talked a little bit about picture graphs. And hopefully you were able to make your own picture graph or pictograph um, at home. You were either tracking something that you made or maybe things you had at home. So sometimes we can use different sorts of graphs or uh, ways to collect data uh, in order to help you to create a picture graph. So we're gonna do something like this. We're just gonna make it really small. I'm gonna give it a title. So we'll say, we'll say number of Legos. And we'll have two people. We'll do a Q for Quinn and E for Eli. Now on this one, we're gonna actually do a tally chart. So we'll say, all right, we'll say Quinn has five Legos, and we'll say Eli has seven. So if we look, there's some pretty simple data here. We know we have two uh, people involved in this. We're tracking the data with tallies. We know Quinn has a total of five Legos. We know Eli has a total of seven. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer this over to a picture graph. Now remember, with a picture graph, we need to have a key. So let's do a Lego block as best as I can. Could turn out ugly. So here's my lovely Lego block. So one Lego block equals one set. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm not gonna make those Lego blocks as fancy as I did up there. We're actually going to keep the title the same. So we'll, we'll do number of sets. Number of Lego. We'll still keep our characters the same. We'll have Quinn at the top. We'll have Eli at the bottom. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Now if you look over here at our tally, you just say, all right. I see that Quinn had five um, tallies, so that means if I go down here to the key, I'm going to say I'm going to need to draw five Lego blocks. Now I'm just going to draw regular blocks. So one, two, three, four, five. They don't have to be masterpieces. The biggest thing is you're just getting the information down. Now, Eli, we go over here, say, all right, Eli had five, six, seven, seven total Lego sets. We go down to our key. We know that each Lego block represents one set, so we're gonna need to give Eli seven. See if I can fit seven on here. I'll have to go down here. So, Eli has seven. Now, this data can give us some pretty simple information, like who has more and who has less. Well, obviously Eli has more, Quinn has less. If we wanted to figure out how many Lego sets they had total, we could take the number that Quinn has, five, and the number that Eli has, and combine it all together and say, all right, well, they have a total of 12 sets together. So what I'm gonna suggest you do today is think about something that you have a few things of. Maybe it's Lego sets, maybe it's video games, Maybe it's something as simple or silly as socks or candy. Come up with a tally um, chart for this. Track it, give it a title, like if you're keeping track of your socks. Number of socks you have, and maybe you have two different colors. Maybe you have pink and you have blue. You have six pink and you have eight blue. Come up with a key down here. Maybe you have one sock equals one sock. You come over here, you have pink, you have blue, you give it the same title because really you're dealing with the same information and you're going to put down your pictures that represent um, the amount of items that you have, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, we're gonna make a transition over here 
and hopefully I can get a good picture right away. I can get up nice and close and you can see my shiny bald head. All right. Hopefully I'm right in the middle. Okay, so since we're separate, we're not able to spend a whole lot of time with each other, which obviously we're disappointed about. But one thing that we always have talked about in our classroom is the fact that we're a family. We work together. Families don't always get along. Sometimes there are arguments and disagreements, but we care about each other and we worry and care about each other's feelings. Well, sometimes you don't always feel like you're part of something, part of a group. And that can be a hard feeling to have. Sometimes you want to go play at the playground with a group of kids, and maybe they don't invite you to be part of their game. Maybe your brothers or sisters are older, and you really want to be part of what they're doing, and they say, no, what we're doing is too old for you. That doesn't make you feel good. Sometimes you feel kind of like left out. That's a difficult feeling to, to have, isn't it? So... As being part of a group, we want to feel comfortable with the group that we're in. We want to feel included. That's a big word. Included means, hey, we are part of that group. We care, we feel included when we're around other people who care about us, want to take care of us, and have us involved in what they're doing and want them, they want us to be with, with them. Um, Sometimes we don't always belong to a group and we can still feel comfortable. I don't belong to the family next door. I still like them. They're very nice neighbors, but I still feel comfortable because I have my own family that I can be part of. So sometimes we don't always have to be part of a group to feel comfortable. But sometimes, like we mentioned before, we want to be part of a certain group. And the people in that group tell us that we don't, they don't want us to, to join in or be part of that. We feel rejected in that case, or excluded. The words rejected and excluded make us feel like left out, unwanted, or disliked. Feeling rejected or excluded can be kind of painful, and it can hurt our feelings for a really long time. Feeling rejected or excluded can make us feel sad or angry, upset or unwanted, depressed or other uncomfortable feelings. Sometimes people pretend that they don't really care and that they don't want to belong to that group anyway. Sometimes people feel hurt and upset and try to hurt the other people back. Sometimes people decide to join another group instead. There are many other ways that people try and solve the problem of feeling rejected, but no one likes to feel hurt inside. I'm going to actually read you a story about a little boy and his elephant who felt rejected. They weren't part of a group, or they wanted to be part of a group, and that group didn't want to involve them. So we've read this one before, and it's a good one. And when we're done, I want you to do something a little different. I want you to talk to your mom or dad or grandma and grandpa about the feelings you might have when you want to play with someone or a group and they don't let you play with them or be part of that group. I want you to come up with some different strategies that you could use when people don't want you to join their group. How you could deal with that, being upset or hurt in a positive way. Okay, so here's Strictly No Elephants. The trouble with having a tiny elephant for a pet is that you never quite fit in. No one else has an elephant. And if you look through that apartment complex, you see a lot of different other pets, but you only see one elephant. Every day, I take my elephant for a walk. He is very thought. He is his is a very thoughtful sort of walk. Oh, that's very nice of him. He's holding the umbrella for his um, his friend, so he can carry his plant. 
doesn't like the cracks in the sidewalk much. So it looks like the boy has to carry him. I always go back and help him over. That's what friends do. Lift each other over the cracks. And that kind of represents what our friends can do. Kind of picking us up when we're having a hard time. Today, I'm walking my tiny elephant to number 17. It's Pet Club Day, and everyone will be there. So we see lots of dogs on the way to this pet club, but no other elephants. Come along, said the boy. There's a good boy. I coax him the last few feet. It'll be fine. That elephant looks a little nervous, or maybe scared or worried. When I look up, there's a sign on the door. Oof, both of them have a look of shock. Maybe a little upset. Oh my goodness. The sign says strictly no elephants. My tiny elephant leads me back to the sidewalk, never minding the cracks. That's what friends do. Brave the scary things for you. Man, they look a little upset. It's kind of raining, and they both look kind of down. That weather kind of represents their feelings, doesn't it? Did you try and go to the pet meeting too, the girl asks. Yes, I say, but they don't allow elephants. The sign didn't mention skunks, the girl says, but they didn't want us to play with them either. They don't know any better, I tell her. This kind of sounds like something that we learned about before with our civil rights movement, where people were treated differently because of where they came from or what they looked like or how they talked or what they believed in. And we know that that's wrong to treat people differently because of those things. We need to look on the inside of people, not the outside. He doesn't stink, the girl adds. No, he doesn't, I agree. What if we start our own club? Come along, I say, making certain that my tiny elephant follows me. Because that's what friends do. Never leave anyone behind. Oh, there's a penguin up there, too. Oh my goodness. Looks like they've collected quite the crowd. That giraffe looks like he's having a good time. We can play here, one of our new friends says. All of us. Looks like a cool clubhouse. So, we paint our own sign. It's a little hard to read, but it says strictly no strangers, no spoil sports. All that's X'd out, it said all are welcome. What a good attitude to have. My tiny elephant will give you directions if you need them. Wow, that looks like they're having a great time together. Because that's what friends do. So we know that we all might deal with that problem of feeling excluded or not wanted in a certain group. One of the nice things about that book is it talks about the power of friendship. And I know that all of you guys have a good friend in our class. Sometimes relying on those good friends in those difficult times is a great resource. And understanding what it feels like the next time someone comes to you and wants to be part of your group. And maybe you don't always want them to be part of your group. Knowing what it feels like to feel excluded might help you to feel a little empathy for that person and say, okay, come on and join us. Well, I hope you guys are doing well and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Um, remember, we're going to try and do art and um, science and my goal is to try and do that on Friday. Okay, I'll talk to you guys then.